Hi everybody, welcome to Tutor Tip Tuesday. Today we'll be starting a six part series focusing on patterns that you see in world myths or ancient cultures. The first pattern that you often see is creation myths. Almost every belief system, mythology, culture, culture, ancient or modern, you will find creation myths, creation stories. Now, with creation myths, you will often find eight common elements that keep on with that pattern. So number one is a birth of some sort, the beginning of everything. In Greek mythology, it is the bird Nyx in some versions that lays an egg and once the egg cracks, the universe is started. Everything begins, life begins. Number two is mother and father. This is quite literal. In most cultures, there is a mother figure and a father figure. In Japanese culture, their names are Izanami and Izanagi. They marry, they create Japan, they have children, and they begin life in that region. Next is genealogy. So this is number three. Genealogy is the children or the family tree of that mother and father we just talked about. So in the Iroquois belief, it is the sky woman who starts everything life on earth, she has children, and the children continue that creation and life on earth. Number four is supreme beings, aka gods and goddesses. In Australian Aborigines, it is the father of all spirits. In African Bushmen, it is a supreme being called Kiang, Kiang. And in Greek and Japanese, English, uh, sorry, Egyptian, massive amounts of gods and goddesses, supreme beings. Number five is creation from above or below. This depends on what culture you are reading about. So for instance, in the Iroquois belief, creation came from above. The sky woman literally fell to earth and her sons, the twin brothers, they helped create everything on the earth. So that creation literally came from above. Next, number six, is a relationship between humans and animals. In the African Bushmen myths, what life was like for the humans at first was underground, having a very close relationship with the animals. We understood the animals. We were kind to each other. It was like you, your pet was a pet lion. Not even a pet. Your best friend was a lion. I mean, can you imagine that life? So a lot of creation myths have that original relationship between the animals and mankind. Number seven is a cause and effect. Instruction, sin, and consequence. So continuing on that African Bushman myth, the instruction for mankind, once they went above ground, was to not make fire. Kiang, Kiang told them, do not make fire. You don't need it. The, the sin, however, was making fire because once mankind went above ground because Kian Kiang was making it special for them and once it was ready, they went, they went above ground. However, mankind discovered it was cold. It was dark. They were hungry. And so they made fire. That was their sin. The consequence, of course, was losing that relationship between mankind and animals. It was broken. You can guess why. The animals were scared of the fire. Mankind realized they could eat the animals. So of course that bond was ruined. Number eight, the final element and probably the most rare of them all is diver myths. In the Iroquois belief, the sky woman falls from the heavens, what we would, what most folks call heavens, she falls to what is an entire water earth. So she falls into the water. The sea creatures want to help her. And so they literally dive into the water and pull land up to the surface for her to live on. So literally diving into the water. All right. Next week, we will talk about the next pattern of most world myths and how that applies to us today. All right, I'll see you guys next week. I hope you have a beautiful day and just go outside and have fun and learn something. Bye.